Hi everybody, my name's Claire Shafrad. I'm the name behind Trippy Acrylics. I just wanted to introduce myself properly because um, I've done a couple of videos now uh, for you guys and <clears throat> <it's, laughs> you just see me on my hands and you see perhaps the dogs whizzing around in the background. So I thought it'd be kind of nice to introduce myself properly to you. Um, just give you um, a little background information on how I got into acrylic pouring. This probably started for me, I'd say nearly two years ago now. I was looking for another sort of creative outlet, having um, already ventured into the world of baking and um, had my own cupcake and, um, well, baking business for four years. But I was also working at the same time. Um, I work in um, a law firm and it can be pretty hectic at times. Although a lovely bunch of people I work with, you know, you get those days when it's just like full on in the office and you just need to just zone out and do something creative when you're done. And uh, yeah, so I, I just Googled it, um, did a bit of research, looked like um, fun, looked like a challenge. So yes, yeah, so I think I started off with um, just doing a normal flip cup which is something that I learned from the wonderful Julie Cuts from Pouring Your Heart Out, um, Australian artist, fantastic. She's absolutely fantastic. Um, the work she creates is just, oh, it's amazing. And it just inspired me. So I started off doing that. And then I kind of ventured into the world of Dutch pours um, with the lovely Rinska, Rinska, I think I can say this right, Rinska Downer. And then onto the Shelley Art Bloom. So yeah, all very varied. And there's lots of other techniques as well that you can do with this pouring. So I, I just wanted to um, let you know where I started. And I started, I think, doing a, a basic flip cup pour. Um, so I, um, at the end of this video, I'm going to continue with that just to show you how I started. I haven't done one for such a long time. I probably haven't done a flip cup pour for probably about a year or so, a proper one. So um, it might be a bit rusty, but that's how I got into it. So I hope you enjoy it. It's um, <laughs> This whole process is a learning curve for me. It's still a work in progress. I still make lots of mistakes, but I think it's important that you guys see that when I do the videos. I don't like edit any of that out. I may do a bit of editing of me like waffling on, but I just keep all those you know, scrapes and repaws in because I think it's I think it's really important that you see that you don't always get this right first time. And a lot of people tend to get be a bit hard on themselves initially when they they you get all excited, you get all because you have, there's a lot of prep, you get all your, your paints together and you have this sort of vision in mind, this idea of what it is you're gonna create and then it all goes a bit horribly wrong. So yeah, I show you all that process and I hopefully show you how to fix it because that's um, what I try to do because I don't like wasting paint. I really don't like it. I try and scoop it up, keep it aside for another pour. It's really important because it can get a little bit expensive, this whole um, hobby. Um, and especially if you are in the UK and perhaps if you're doing the fluid bloom technique, we can't always get the right ingredients that we'd like. So um, we end up ordering all these kind of, you know, far out ingredients, you know, from places like Australia. And yeah, it does get a bit pricey. But I just wanted to just say hi, really, and introduce myself. And I probably will be doing a few more videos. Uh, I don't know. Depends how, <laughs> depends how brave I am, because it is, um, I'm very au natural. <laughs> <laughs> there's no flashiness in any of my videos it's um little old me in my garage with my dogs um i try to um set time aside to do to do my pouring because i think that's really important that you do that everybody needs that outlet and they need that time to themselves to be creative because i think if you're in a, a place where you feel you've got time constraints then it's going to really mess around with your creativity and I know that I've also got to be by myself. I can't have like kids wanting to know when tea's ready or, you know, it's, 
you just got to have your own time and your space to create. I like to put some music on, I like to get in that zone and just go with it. So, yeah, I hope you um, tune in to more of my videos. <laughs> um, they are, um, yeah, they are what they are. And I hope they help you guys in, in some way. And so, yeah, so this one I'm going to be doing um, where I started. Um, it was a flip cut pour. So it's um, quite a, a basic one, but I just want you to see how I mixed up the colours, got the consistency. And I think I just start on a, a small uh, six inch or five inch ceramic tile, which are great to do pouring on any types of pouring because you can just reuse them if you're not happy with what you've done. So, yeah. OK, so nice to meet you all. <laughs> Hello from Jersey in the Channel Islands. And um, yeah, tune in and uh, check out <laughs> what I've got to offer with my wonderful acrylic pouring techniques. OK, bye guys. Hi everybody, hope you're doing okay. Today I'm going to start off um, with a basic flip cup pour. This is something, um, well this is one of the first techniques um, that ever got me into the fluid art world and I think it would just be fun um, for people to see how I started doing this and uh, the very basic technique which is the flip cup because I've kind of gone in at the deep end with my videos doing the Dutch pour, doing the Shelley Art Bloom technique and they're um, pretty full on. So I'm going to just start off. I think it's it would be beneficial as well for um, people to see where I started with this. I've been doing it now for about two years and um, I'm still learning. It's still a work in progress, but most importantly, I'm enjoying it and I'm having fun. Um, there's times where you um, have an idea in your head and you think right I want to I want to do this or I want to copy this person or and it doesn't work and you get so disheartened and you feel like giving up and no matter what you just get bad days and you just can't seem to get that technique right and you just oh it, it can get a little bit laborious so I think at that point it's the point when you should just stop walk away leave it for a good couple of days and most importantly, for me anyway, I know that I have got to be in a fairly calm place before I do this. If I've been a bit stressed out beforehand through whatever, could be anything, you know, what life's like, all sorts of things go on. Um, you know, it could be work stress, could be home stress, could be just anything really. Uh, could be just like being stuck in a traffic jam and you're all stressed out. It's not good. You need to kind of be in a nice, calm place. And you need, I think also, you need to have some time set aside to do this without any interruptions, anybody coming into your creative zone. The only people allowed in my creative zone are my dogs, which at the moment I think they're indoors. Because if I've got kids running in and out or husband running in and out of the garage, then it's like, oh, you know can't be doing with this so yeah it's it's time for you it's your time guys so enjoy that time you have even if it's just an hour you know it's important that we all have that, that time to ourselves so we can just chill out I normally put on some music but I won't be for this video because you might not like my music tastes <laughs> they vary <laughs> okay so I'm going to start with the flip cup pour this was inspired initially by Julie Cutts from Pouring Your Heart Out, wonderful Australian fluid artist. She does some amazing work and this is what got me, it was Julie that got me into doing all this just by watching her various YouTube videos and she's just marvellous. Um, we can't always get exactly the same products here in the UK so I'm using what I can get hold of. I'm in Jersey in the Channel Islands which is um, part of the UK so I'm quite fortunate that I can get these products um, from shipped over here. So the ones I will be using today for this flip cup pour are, let me try and get into some sort of focus here, are the good old X2 range from Specialist Crafts. Now these are free flow paints, which means they're all ready, just a tip from the bottle, they're ready for fluid art and pouring, okay? They've been obviously pre-mixed with whatever they maybe just some water just to thin them down um but i use these they're absolutely great 
fantastic for fluid art really really brilliant i'm sure um you can get all sorts of other similar products like these around the world i do know that um specialist crafts in the uk do ship around the world and europe so uh <clears throat> that's just they're just great they're just this fun to use so i'll be using those and i'm going to be using four colors only okay because i want you to see how i started off now you can do this on you can do it on a canvas you can do it on a wood surface um you can do it on a ceramic tile this is just good to practice on i always use these to practice on okay because if you're not happy with what the outcome is you can just rinse it off under the tap or just scrape it into the bin whatever you like or, or just simply let it dry and keep it um, then peel it off and make jewellery from it whatever or collages you know the, the possibilities are endless with this technique what you can do so um, I've got to now show you how I get the consistencies for doing uh, a flip cup okay so literally a flip cup is pouring some of your colour into your cup, perhaps mixing it with some pouring medium. Now, I might just be adding a little bit of pouring medium, such as Liquitex, or just a bit of water with these, just a tiny bit. I won't need a lot because these are pre-pouring paints are all ready to go, okay? If you were using a normal thick acrylic, you would probably use one-to-one um, -one ratio. It all depends because different brands different thicknesses different consistencies it's very difficult the consistency you need to get would be like warm honey okay sort of drizzles in and then when it drizzles back on top of the paint from the stick it leaves like um a trail in the paint and that will eventually disappear after a while the kind of kind of for the thick side so a lot a little bit more thicker than you use for a Dutch pour and not as thick as what you use for a Bloom Shelley Art technique. So you're kind of in between. So I'm only using a five by five. Okay, so I'm only going to need to say two fluid ounces of each um, colour. And that flu two fluid ounces actually also includes any pouring medium that I may use, whether it be water or Liquitex. You can get all sorts of pouring mediums. I have got a little tiny bit of Lix Liquitex pouring medium left. It's great. It can be quite pricey. Okay. Or you can use water. I've got another one here by, I can't even say this, v Vallejo. Vallejo. I'm not sure how you say that. V-A-L-L-E-J-O pouring medium. Okay. This is just to um, thin out those thick paints. All right but also making sure that the paints are still binding well together because you don't want them to lose any colour or nice pigment. All right, it's just that pouring medium helps that. Now, I'm going to start with the white. Okay, so I'm going to pour a bit of my white. Now, for the sake of this, I will be weighing right which is a bit tedious and a bit boring but this is how i started so i'm going to put it into fluid ounces you could do milliliters but i'm doing working in fluid ounces get my little plastic cup i do also have um <laughs> i tend to accumulate these because i eat a lot of puddings they're like little yogurt pots or little chocolate pots that i keep they're glass they're fantastic so yeah i probably got about 20 or 30 of them surprise surprise so i reuse those a lot but i'm going to use this so i've zeroed out my scales okay so i'm going to pour in say two fluid ounces of this if i've got enough because so i'm going through my paint at the rate of knots at the moment so white the white titanium white is a heavy paint heavy density okay so it's quite thick this one so when i actually pour my colors into the cup all together you'll see afterwards i always pour my white in first because that's a heavy paint it's a heavy density paint and it will pour through all the colors in the cup okay so i'm just looking at this now this is a pouring paint i think i might need a bit more water in there if you can see it's it's quite 
quite thick still because that is the titanium white so I'm going to add a little bit of water to that not much for this five inch um, substrate um, or should I say I shouldn't say silly art words like substrate um, ceramic tile I'm going to need about two fluid ounces each of each color okay I don't tend to use a lot of white because mm, I don't particularly like too many white cells. Okay, I think that's right. Then I'm going to use yellow. So I'm using like primary colours in this, just basic colours. It might not be a fantastic, lovely outcome, but I want you to see how I started and how, um, you just zero that. What got me into this really? So some yellow. Now yellow is a bit of a controversial colour in pores because it can sometimes, I'm not going to put too much in there, one and a quarter, it can sometimes muddy colours. Yellow is a very dis difficult colour, I think, to use in the in the um, acrylic pouring world. I think the only colours that I can use with yellow are other yellows. So different shades of yellow work well together. And gold. I think I did a sunflower once, a sunflower pour, and it was quite successful but I use like beiges and yellows and try to keep them pretty much all the same sort of colour and shade because when you start venturing with yellow to other colours oh goodness me you can end up with mud and all sorts it's quite thick I haven't used this paint for quite some time so it's got a bit bubbly so see it's pouring off it's pouring off the stick but it's leaving a trail in the cup all right <clears throat> i need to get a proper actually set up here so you can see overhead because it's quite difficult then i'm going to use um magenta so that was the x2 as well that was a free flow cadmium yellow medium hue okay so then i'm now going to use magenta which is one of my favorites this magenta from Specialist Crafts, the X2 is beautiful. It's just beautiful, really vibrant colour. I managed to get a golden retriever here and there, no surprise. They're everywhere. Right, okay. So I'm going to put two fluid ounces. I love this colour, so I'm going to make it up. Put two fluid ounces in there. Okay, let's see how. See, that's quite. That's red, as far as I'm concerned, this is the perfect consistency. It just pours into trail. It's a beautiful, beautiful paint, beautiful colours. As I say, consistency is varied between colours. Some colours are thicker than others, that's just the way it is. And the last colour I'm going to use is green. Goodness knows what we're going to get out of this lot. So this is um, a Cadmium Green by X2. Beautiful paints, great. Great fun for um, if you want to just go for it and ready to pour and do something like this. There's not a lot of mixing involved. I think this one, if I remember, is quite thick. So might need watering down or you can add, add a bit of water. <clears throat> Excuse me, add a little bit of pouring medium. It's entirely up to you. I don't do a lot of these split cups these days. I do more, a lot more of the Dutch pool and um, the fluid bloom. So let's have a look at this consistency. Not bad. I want to get it the same as the red. Yeah. Okay, red's okay. That white's too thick. It's always too thick, the white. a bit better i'm not going to use a great deal of the white because like i say i'm not overly keen on too many white cells popping through so i might use a bit of the white in between each color so they don't muddy sometimes that's important to use white in between each of your colors especially if they're bright colors like these or they might not necessarily go together you might get a, a bit of mud coming out yeah that's more but this is more or less just to show you 
a technique. Okay, so I've got my colours. Now I need <laughs> another cup to be able to pour them into. So just bear with me a second while I get another plastic cup. I can find one, that is. Okay. Right, so we've got our four colours, all right? So we have our white, we have our yellow, we have our magenta, and we have our green. Okay, so that's probably how I'm going to layer them up. So it'll be white, yellow, magenta, and green. Goodness knows what this is gonna turn out like. But before I do any of that, I haven't used this for a while either, I'm going to add a drop of silicon, just one drop to each colour apart from the white. I don't want to add it in the white because if you add it in the white, I, I think it makes it too busy and you get too many, too many um, cells. And I don't want too many cells. So this stuff is um, Montmartre silicon oil, but you can get treadmill silicon oil. There's all, so all sorts, all sorts you can get. And I know a lot of people actually use hair oil as well. You can get coconut oil, all sorts of different ones. It's a silicon oil. I, I can't actually pronounce it. It's, I think it's called dimethicone. I think that's what's in it that makes the cells. See if I can actually see that written somewhere. I think it is, I think it's dimethicone. Okay. So I'm gonna just put one drop in each color, but not the white. One, maybe a bit more. <laughs> One. There. Okay. And I'm just going to give that a good stir like that. Remember, I'm using pre pre made up pre pouring paints ready to pour. Okay. Um, so it's a lot easier because it does take a bit of extra time when you're just new, using normal acrylics to actually um, mix them all up so that they're the right consistency, but this is pretty easy. Okay, so I've put, put my silicon in, I've mixed all my colours up. So now I'm getting my, this cup here. Right, I'm gonna move my scales out the way. I'm going to put them down here. And I'm going to start layering up my colours in the cup, which is your flip cup. All right. So I'm going to start with, always start with white because white is heavy. Okay, it's a heavy colour, heavy density. All right. And it will pull through all the other colours mixing. So that white will hit maybe the red and that will make pink. All depends. You never really know what you're going to get with this. So it's a bit of white in there. I don't want to go mad with the white. Then I'm going to put a bit of yellow in. I think I'm just going to whack it all in like that. <laughs> and then I'm going to go for some red. I'm going to just put a wee bit of white in between there. And then I'm going to put a bit of red in. I love this magenta. I really do. So I'm just literally layering it up. Then I'm going to put some green in. Okay. You can also use a colour wheel. I don't know if you've ever heard of a colour wheel. Um, this is colour theory. If you just need to have a little read on colour theory, or Google it and the colour wheel. And it tells you what colours go well together. So you've got complementary colours, all sorts of different things, you know. It's very interesting. So if you find some time, just, just, just go for it. Have a little, I'm just finishing up with the rest of the colours. Have a little um, read on colour theory because that is important. More. That's going to make a pink colour. Okay, I'm not putting any more yellow in because yellow mm, always scares me a bit. <laughs> okay, so there's all my cups. So the last thing I'm going to do, so I've got my colours, they're all prettily layered up, okay, like that. I'm going to just quickly do a crisscross, just like that. You don't mix it, just a little crisscross, just gently in the colours. Then I am now going to get my tile, bring it back. 
I've just got it balancing on a little ramekin dish. Yeah, make sure when you, if you're into this fluid art, keep all your little ramekin dishes and things you get from puddings and stuff and yogurt pots because it's very useful. You can just reuse them. Okay, so I'm now going to um, flip this cup onto this. So it's best if this is a canvas, a piece of wood, so do it like this, not a very sturdy cup. Okay, and then just hold it like that and flip it. Okay, and just leave it for, a, I don't know, you can leave it for about half a minute just so that the colours have time, okay, to sink through. So that white now at the bottom is now, it's heavy, so it's going all the way down through all those colours. Just let it do that. Let it, all the colours flow and see what we get. So the next thing you probably need as well is a torch, okay? These are um you can get these on Amazon. You can get very you can get smaller ones specifically made for this sort of art form. Um, you can also get a very I think it's a Draper torch. It's called a small blue one. You can get that from specialistcrafts.co.uk. You can also get these from Amazon. They're just the ones you use if you were doing like um a creme brulee or something. Uh, just it's they're not ferocious it's just a little flame and what this does is you sweep it over not close at a distance sweep it over your pour afterwards and then it brings up that heat will bring up the cells you can get the cells without using this but you you get a better result when you use a bit of um a bit of heat okay so we will see in a minute i think we're almost ready to reveal <laughs> Nobody ever really knows what they're going to get with this. This is the whole exciting bit about it, and it's fun. It's really fun. Let's see now. Okay, so I'm just literally going to pour. Tap, I think it's had enough time to pour the colours through. And then reveal. Wow, look at that. It's really, really cool. It's, it is lovely just to look at all those colours and things. Now... Do I torch first or do I pour and tilt? I think I'm going to torch first and see what cells I get. And then depending on what the um, composition looks like, I will tilt this way or that way to get rid of um, some of the, some of the, maybe the muddy bits, all right? So some of the cells are popping up already without me torching, but I can also have got air bubbles in here. And that's another reason why you want to use this. So I've got it and I'm going to just go not to quickly sweep over. Oh, look, loads of little cells are starting to pop up. There, 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 there. Just leave it for a bit because they'll still keep popping up. I'm going to start to tilt now to see the areas. So there you go. I'm going to get rid, I think, because I love the magenta. See, yellow is a bit of a... <laughs> bit of a no-no for me so I'm going to tilt that way bring that back I want to keep that red in the corner because it's got some nice little pink going on there as well and that's it it's fun it's real fun my daughter's done this with me and she absolutely loved it it is very pretty very pretty so then I'll talk to you again in a minute See what other cells I can get. Just bring this down here. Okay. Very red. There you go. I'm going to just pop that there a second. Oh my goodness. You do get in a bit of a mess. So it's kind of important that you've got some plastic down or you can use a bin liner or some... Um, I get these reels of um, plastic, they're massive, and I, you, you only use a little bit. Or just newspaper, anything. Or sometimes you can use um, silicone mats because you can catch the paint drips which pull down. Some of these paint drips are so beautiful that you can let them dry and they, they form paint skins. And then you peel them off, which is quite satisfying, and you keep them and you can make wonderful jewellery beautiful jewelry with the paint skin so that's something else to remember okay so i'm going to just find a cloth so keep at hand an old towel some old rags or towels okay i've actually i do actually use i've got a massive thing of these they're like big wipes 
cleaning wipes you get paint and all sorts of resin and everything off your hands so i'm now going to do another quick torch over yep some more colors have come up very pretty So I've got my cells and I've got my, I'm really happy with it. It's great. I haven't done, like I say, I haven't done one of these for a very, very long time. <laughs> now you can stretch, you can look at it and you can stretch this way, that way, just depends. When you stretch though, remember those cells are gonna stretch as well. You don't need a lot of that silicon. You only need a couple of drops. I only use one drop per, per cup. Apart from, I didn't put any in the, um, I'm going to get rid of some of that yellow, in the white. Because if I'd have put it in the white, I'd have had loads of white cells and I don't like that. Beautiful, really pretty look, all the different cells coming up. It's a bit like a Mexican, Mexican sort of theme going on there, Mexican colours. So you can have a lot of fun with this and you can get your kids involved as well. It's just, it's, it's just really good fun. You can get so creative with it. So this was my first technique that I learned. It was li literally just a flip cup, flip cup pull. Okay. So all you need is your paints. These, like I say, are, are, are ready for pouring. These are X2 range, but you can also get X4 and X6. X4 is slightly thicker, X6 is the thickest, and these are the pouring ones ready to go. I'll put some um, links in the description below the video for you. Um, you can use a pouring medium with them if they're, some of them may be a bit thicker, but like I said, you want that sort of like warm honey so that when that paint drops back into that, um, off the stick, back into the cup, you can see a trail left on the surface for probably about 20 seconds or so and then it will disappear into the actual paint um, so like a warm honey you can use a pouring medium um, you can just to thin those paints out a bit which is um, i use liquitex this is this is great this is available on amazon as well some people i know use something called overtroll overtroll or flow troll you can use that you can also use pva glue there's all different types of pouring mediums. You just have to have a good Google and see and, and just experiment, see what works for you. I do try and keep it as simple as possible. So I hope you enjoyed that. And um, yeah, I'll post all the information in the description below. Okay, bye.